This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by CIBM Bank. It is not good out here. The, the way I look and probably the way Illini fans feel right now is about what the weather is like. It is dreary, it is not great, and that rain is coming down out in the weather garden tonight. You can see on the Storm Tracker Doppler, nice little batch of uh, some heavier rain coming through Champaign County right now and more expected as we go throughout the course of tonight. It's a cold rain as well with these temperatures that are just hanging into the 40s and we're not going to be done anytime soon. You can see we're, we're actually jumped up into the 50s right now, but this stuff's gonna continue. Disgusting weather will continue. The wind as well, we'll talk about when it finally changes when we come back. WCA3 News starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Lots of orange and blue in Des Moines, Iowa for the start of March Madness, but it was too little, too late for the Illini. Good evening, I'm Brendan Morano. Jennifer has the night off. Illinois opened up against 8th seed Arkansas. The Illini cut it to just 5 with a couple minutes left, but couldn't pull off the comeback. And WCIA 3's Brett Barron's live at Wells Fargo Arena. And Brett, a disappointing season up and down, just all over the place for the Illini. Fans leaving the arena here now, and several left early as this one was really decided with about a minute and a half to go. You could tell Arkansas was starting to pull away. Give the Illini credit. They trailed by as many as 17 there early in the second half. Fought back, got it down to within five. R.J. Melendez went on an 8-0 run by himself. Then the Illini went on a 7-0 run late to cut that lead to five, but it does not amount to anything more than a loss. Once again, the Illini get down early in the first half, 14 points. They were trailing in that first half and fight their way back. This has been the story of the season for the Orange and Blue. Cutting a deficit late, but it's a fake rally. It doesn't matter. And now the Illini once again dig themselves in that hole, and they are packing their bags, heading out of town here early. One and done in the NCAA tournament. We will have more highlights here from the Illini coming up a little bit later in sports. They finish the season 20 and 13. For now, reporting live in Des Moines, I'm Brett Behrens. Brandon, back to you. All right, thank you, Brett. One school in Champaign County now has the green light to start a renovation project. Rantoul Township High School will soon have a refreshed lobby, loft area, and basement, and they're working with Champaign contractors to make the first phase of the multi-million dollar program happen. Some offices will be gutted and replaced with bathrooms. That work is set to begin next summer and will continue through the school year. And we're learning more details today about a shooting that happened early Wednesday morning in Urbana. Now, we know that 16-year-old was shot in the head was Montrell Emery. WCI 3's Amanda Brennan live in our newsroom. Amanda, you talked to someone today who knew him. Yes, Tony Odom has been involved in the Champaign area for years, aiming to reduce gun violence. The last news he wanted to hear this week was the unexpected death of someone he loved. Odom says Emery was smart, and he knew he'd be successful. Oh, this is a beautiful young man, you know what I'm saying? Had always had a smile on his face, bright, you know what I'm saying? Very, very uh, intelligent, but well-mannered kid. Cody Odom is remembering a 16-year-old he knows. This is a real tragedy, man. This is a real tragedy. And I want people to really, I want people to really attach themselves emotionally. Montreal Emery was killed during a Wednesday morning shooting in Urbana. These are lies, you know. He's our lives being lost. He was shot in the head, and now his parents are grieving. His mother and his father, I've known them for a substantial amount of time in, in Champaign. Beautiful people, you know, good people, working people. Those are to the mother and just to the community and the father. I've known him for a long time, you know what I'm saying? He's like a little brother to me. Odom wants no other parent to go through the pain. Kids when they're 15 or 16, I was 15 or 16 at one point in my life. And, 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 it's, and it's a hard time because you got peer pressures. You know what I'm saying? You might, you're not giving all opportunities. And wants to provide programs where he can. Right now I'm doing on-ground mentoring. I'm um, doing the basketball coaching. I'm doing the haircutting still. I'm doing the personal mentoring. He says no other kid should have their life taken away so soon. These are human beings that's dying. These are young kids that's not going to get an opportunity to do nothing in life. They're gone. 
Now, I just got off the phone with Urbana police a couple of minutes ago. Lieutenant Mike Cervantes says they're still working on a motive, but no, it was not a random act. There are no arrests at this time, but he says detectives are working several leads. They are also investigating a silver car that was on scene. He says if you know anything that could lead to answers, call police. Reporting live in the newsroom, Amanda Brennan, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Sad news there. Thank you, Amanda. Thousands of people die every year in house fires across the country. How a new bill would make it easier to keep you safe. Plus this. Suppressing, suppressing, suppressing. And finally grew up. And it was the scariest moment in my life. Navigating mental health isn't an easy task. Why it's also one that's going ignored within the black community. And the rain really coming down out here in the weather garden tonight. Let's get to a recap of the numbers. 49, 38 degrees, and actually we're still going up in the temperatures. A unique setup with those tonight, but we'll talk about how things really turn with the wind and the cold, and we'll look when the sunshine returns. Your wet forecast coming up. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Lighty. Well, we do it rain or shine out in the old weather garden. Today's not a shiny day, it's a definitely a rainy day. And it's going to continue to be a rainy night. And there's a little pocket right over Champagne right now that, that I'm enduring with this moderate rain that continues to move through. And you can see we're going to pick up in intensity with some of this rain and we're going to get a little bit more widespread over the next few hours. On the back side, some colder air is going to try to switch over to some snow, but I think that's going to be uh, very few and far between where anybody actually picks up on that. Temperatures, in a weird kind of way, are actually going up a little bit here. Look at the 50s out there towards Decatur and in Springfield right now, and you can see temperatures tonight heading down into the uh, low 30s eventually by tomorrow morning, but look at the next four, five, six hours. We're up here into the 50s, okay? It's windy, though. We're Throwing in a nice south wind, 30 miles an hour. It's going to stay windy tomorrow. The difference is we're going to have a 30 mile an hour wind tomorrow when the temperatures are barely into the 30s. So it's going to be a blustery, cold day. The difference is we won't be dealing with rain tomorrow. Just cold and windy. That's Roberts 37, overcast gray skies, Assumption 38, and in Kempton, a very chilly day indeed. So if you don't have to be out, eh. Stay home if you can on your Friday. Like we said, watch some hoops out there. There's a weak system that's trying to show up Friday night into Saturday with a couple of flurries. Not concerned there. 
Overall, the weekend is just cold, both Saturday and Sunday. 29 on Saturday, your high, that's 20 degrees below what is average for this time of the year. Sunday, sunshine back, but only 36. Now, the first day of spring is coming up on Monday, officially, uh, 4.24 p.m. We're forecasting highs into the 40s, but still not quite turning the corner for spring-like weather. But look what happens next week. We jump back up into the upper 50s and mid-60s. So that's when I'm hanging my hat on. That kind of weather. Not this kind of weather. Woo! 29 tonight for a low temperature. Pretty chilly. Wind picking up. 38 tomorrow. It will not feel anything even close to that. And your seven-day forecast, you can see spring-like temperatures coming back. You know, close. We're getting there next week. Maybe another chance of some rain as we head into the middle of next week. But look at some of these overnight lows that are down into the uh, teens as we head into the weekend. This is brutal. <laughs> Murano, Man, this is Kevin, brutal. I was thinking about that. I could hear the rain coming down on you out there. You should have done the whole thing with your hood up or we need to get you an umbrella or some kind of... Yeah, you know, cover great. out there. The things we do. The things we do for y'all. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Always a pleasure. Well, it could become cheaper to help prevent fires in your home. A new bill would reimburse homeowners who add a fire sprinkler system to their house up to half the cost. The National Fire Sprinkler Association estimates the median cost for a system is about $7,000. The state coordinator for the NSFA says it's especially important in modern homes. Everything today, because of the synthetics, burns hotter and faster, which puts the first responders and the, the, the firefighters in jeopardy when they go into a home or a business that's involved in fire. If that sprinkler head goes off and suppresses that fire, puts it out, or contains it for the fire department to put it out the rest of the way. Data shows while 10% of fires happen on properties with fire sprinklers, only 1% of fire deaths happen at properties with fire sprinklers. They say those systems also help keep firefighters responding to those fires safe. And a tough loss for the Illini just a little earlier. Brett Behrens joins us live to break it all down a little later. Plus, 16 seed could beat a one seed. Um, there's always upsets. It's a great time. The madness is here, what you need to know about this year's NCAA tournament. That's coming up next.
Hey, Kevin. Live from your local news leader, Jennifer Roscoe, Jessica Coons, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Lighty and Brett Barron's on sports. You're watching WCIA 3 News at 6. College basketball's March Madness is in full swing today with 16 games, four on CBS. Astrid Martinez has more on what you need to know about the tournament and how you can get in fun get in on the fun rather on the event even if you're not a sports expert it's that time of year you never know what's going to happen where it seems the entire u.s will go college basketball crazy for the next few weeks a 16 seed could beat a one seed um, there's always upsets it's a great time basketball fans are trying to predict the winners of 63 games not an easy task the chances of getting all the games right are 1 in 9.2 quintillion. It's a billion squared. It's huge numbers. But that won't stop fans from trying. I just kind of listen to my friends that have more experience with it, but, um, you know, I get lucky once in a while. Even CBS News anchor Anne-Marie Green has a perfect way to put the finishing touches on her winning bracket. First elimination. Second elimination, Michigan. Fans will be watching CBS Sports to keep track of the winners and losers, and millions will enter CBS's own bracket challenge. CBS Sports senior writer Matt Norlander gave us some tips on filling out a winning bracket. We have had a team seated fifth or worse breakthrough to the big stage, the Final Four, every single tournament over the past decades. Pick a few upsets, just you got to hope that you, uh, that you hit them right. St. Peter's was the surprise team in last year's tournament, and soon we'll know who will wear the Cinderella slipper this year. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. All right, so fun fact that you heard the odds. There's never been a verified perfect bracket despite several contestants coming painstakingly close in recent years. And speaking of coming painstakingly close, the Illini down early, and they were close there at the end. Yeah, just not able to get that final push to get in, to get a win here but we're going to have more coming up next in sports
from the official television station of Illini Sports. This is WCIA 3 Sports and your Illini Nation. March Madness is here in the ninth seed Illini. We're looking to get a dub in the first round facing eighth seed Arkansas and Iowa for the West region. Slow start for both teams, but Luke Goody gets open in the corner and nails the three to make it a one possession game. 8-5 Arkansas and Hogs still leading. Illinois goes nearly three minutes between buckets before Sincere Harris rolls one in on the drive. 13-10 Arkansas, but Arkansas kept running it up the jab and step back from Nick Smith Jr. as he makes the long two. 21-10 Arkansas and now they're going straight to the bucket. Anthony Black being the defense behind the defense throws it down with two hands 27 15 Arkansas and playing catch up before the half Terrence Shannon Jr. struggled but now pulls up for the long two and drains it he scores eight straight points to end the half 34 24 Arkansas Arkansas 36 26 at half Shannon continues his hot streak though Hawkins with the no look pass to Shannon finishes at the rim 38 31 Arkansas now Illini on the fast break pass up to Shannon driving to the basket makes it and he's gonna get fouled He's going to make that free throw. It's going to be 41-35 Arkansas. But the Razorbacks not going to let Illinois back in it. Makai Mitchell backs down Hawkins and spins for the bucket. A 10-0 run for Arkansas, 51-36 Hogs. But Illinois loses in the first round to Arkansas, 73-63. Arkansas will play Kansas on Saturday. And WCIA 3's Brett Barons joins us live from Des Moines, Iowa. Brett, Illini fans not too happy about this one. This one goes to script, Bryce, really for what Illinois has been all season. They get down big in the first half, double-digit deficit, 14 as they trailed Arkansas. They come all the way back, make it a game, cutting it to just a five-point deficit in that second half late, but they're not able to find enough offense to get this one going as the Illini fall by 10, despite a Team high 20 points from Terrence Shannon Jr. R.J. Melendez and Luke Goody provided some sparks for them as well as the two sophomores have played pretty well in the NCAA tournament the last two years. But a disappointing finish as Illinois finishes the last month of the season with a 3-6 and six record, 20-13 and 13 overall this season. Let's take a live listen into the press conference right now here at Wells Fargo uh, Arena. And, and partly of, of, of a young team. Um, I think anytime you're you're seven, eight, nine, ten seed, you've probably had a lot of that, uh, the inconsistencies and, and finding that. And, um, you know, we were, we were high volume, high octane early and turning the ball over 20 times a game and, and um, not very much floor balance. And, um, and, you know, I think there's, there's a variety of reasons numerically and analytically that, that maybe some of that have happened. But again, I think, you know, let's not forget that, that there's a lot of new faces in that locker room. Turnovers, a huge story for the Orange and Blue all day. 17 in the game. That is not going to get you very far in a one-and-done situation where you have to win in the NCAA tournament, and the Illini do not do that as the streak is now up to 18 consecutive years that the Illini have not played in the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. That elusive Sweet 16 trip will have to wait for Brad Underwood's team and the Illini as they fall by 10 here at Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines, Iowa. Bryce will have more coming up tonight at 10, including more reaction from the Illini. But for now, reporting live for your Illini Nation, I'm Brett Behrens, WCIA 3 Sports. All right, thanks so much, Brett. And former Illini guard Sky Clark announced he committed to Louisville. Clark announced this one on Twitter. The five-star recruit from Florida entered the transfer portal portal earlier this week. He stepped away from Illinois program January 6, saying his decision had nothing to do with basketball and he needed to prioritize himself and his family. And the winner of Athlete of the Week is to topless basketball star Caleb Simer. The senior helped his team place third in the IHSA 2A Boys Basketball Tournament last week. Simer led his team with 32 points in the third place game. He is also the leading scorer for the Wooden Shoes, averaging 12.8 points per game with a total of 300 rebounds this season. I played my heart out. I knew it was my last game, so I played my heart out for it, and it was just fun atmosphere to play in up there. It's a great feeling to bring a trophy home to the community that supported us this whole ride, and it's just a great feeling as a person to get a trophy. 
Simer is now eligible for a $1,000 scholarship. We'll give to one boy and one girl this summer. If you know a deserving high school student who should be our next weekly winner, fill out the nomination form on our website, WCIA.com. And obviously, disappointing for Illini fans out there. Disappointing for Illini fans, but hey, great stats and uh, congratulations to the... Definitely, congrats yeah. to him. Always yeah. cool. All right, thank you. Well, one Central, or Central Illinois organization is donating thousands to the community. Find out where and this. Robots to help people the 3 ds dull, dirty, dangerous tasks. Wouldn't it be nice to have your own personal assistant around the house? Why, robots could be on the way sooner than you think.
You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6.30. Simply put, it's our ability to regulate our emotions, to utilize coping skills, to deal with stress, pain, and trauma. But they say some have a harder time handling those emotions than others. A panel of professionals focused on the stigma around mental health and the dangers of ignoring it. WCIA 3's Ariana Williams with us. Ariana, why is this so important? The first one was in February for Black History Month, and the response to that one prompted a need to expand on it. Positive mental health is important at every stage of life. Counselors at Parkland College stress the difference between mental illness and mental health from personal experience. Anxiety is real for me. It's real for all of us. How do we choose to deal with it? Factors affecting the mental of the black community usually go unseen or are ignored. If a child or an adolescent experiences some trauma and doesn't receive any attention or care, that carries on into his to lifetime and to adulthood. Trauma can turn into depression, anxiety, or violence. Donna Tanner Harold says constantly hearing about break-ins, shootings, or killings within your community could lead to internalizing. That increases a number of negative things within any individual. One of them is that, is life worth living? Sadly, the answer is sometimes no. My brother, he was a wealthy man. He drove a homo around town, smoked a big cigar. He ended up ending his own life. The suicide rate for black Americans increased by nearly 40% between 2018 and 2021. These are our children. So much that suicide is now the leading cause of death for those who may feel but not understand the pressure the most. People between 15 and 24 years old. How do we destigmatize this so that we can have these People live a full life. Tanner Harrell says this issue starts much younger. To really think broadly, not just what we see and what children see, but what they hear about and how they internalize that. She experienced it firsthand when her grandson asked a heartbreaking question about George Floyd's death. And he said, they killed him because he was a black man. Is that Am I going to be killed? She says the pressure isn't felt equally within the black community, adding when women speak up is anger, and for men, it's seen as weakness. And anger is usually accompanied by other things. People are angry for a reason. It's usually sadness, they're depressed, they're anxious, so we need to look a little bit further. But both feed into a stigma, one they're trying to get rid of. Understanding mental health sounds much easier than what it actually is, but they hope these discussions help to ease the transition into a healthier community. Back to you. All right, thank you, Ariana. If you ever thought of having your own C-3PO or R2-D2 robot, well, that day might not be too far off. A pioneering lab at UCLA has been developing humanoid companions meant to work and maybe even play alongside us. Dina Demetrius reports. At UCLA, Professor Dennis Hong's robots seem to be infused with their creator's playful personality. Some dance, fancy dancing. Hong is a mechanical and aerospace engineer with a love of Star Wars and its charismatic robots. Now he and his graduate students at the Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory, or Romella, are developing next-generation humanoids. For the robots to use tools designed for humans, I believe that robots needs to be the human shape and size. Much of the technology is about advancing how robots move efficiently so they can complete tasks, including dangerous ones meant for this robot named Thor. So if there's an accident in the po nuclear power plant because of radiation, people cannot go. So this robot can not only walk, climb upstairs, drive a car, open and close valves. But the latest star of this lab is its battery-powered goddess, Artemis. Robots to help people the 3D's dull, dirty, dangerous tasks. Now this robot will be able to walk upstairs, rubble pile, outdoors. But Artemis is only the first version of a humanoid Hong says could eventually handle ordinary tasks. These robots helping every day in home, cooking, taking out the uh, you know trash, all those kind of things. We call these uh, this area silver robotics. Uh, for elderly care. While AI is driving the brains of these robots, Hong says the hardware needed is still playing catch up. 
But in robotics, evolution can happen quickly. We're inventing the future, and then, you know, sometimes there's new technologies that we're not anticipating that happens, and the development just skyrockets. Nice to meet you! A humanoid housekeeper may be decades away, or closer than we think. Dina Demetrius, CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, Artemis was named in honor of the Greek goddess. The robot is scheduled to travel in July to France, where it will take part in the soccer competition of the 2023 RoboCup. That's an international scientific meeting where robots demonstrate what they can do. And a big honor for one of the best eats around, why they're recognized as one of the greatest restaurants in all the country. Plus, one at Central Illinois organization is giving back in a big way how much balloons over a million donated today. The news continues here on WCIA 3, your local news leader. Balloons Over Vermilion is giving back to the community. Every year, Balloons Over Vermilion donates money to local organizations that help kids. Jim Anderson says they model their two yearly events around kids. Last year's event brought in the most money the organization has seen since its start six years ago. Well, our, our mission statement's always been it's all about the kids. And when we brought the balloon event back six years ago, we made a commitment to making certain that once we had appropriate reserves set aside, that all the money that was made on the event would go back to youth-oriented organizations in the county. Today, Balloons Over Vermilion handed out $214,700 to 18 Vermilion County organizations. A trip back in time for one U of I building, the newest addition that will soon be greeting guests on campus. Plus, a pretty gloomy day here in Central Illinois. Kevin's back with a look at your full, full, full forecast. That's next.
Now Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Kevin Lighty. Uh, it's so nice to be back inside. <laughs> Dried off a little bit here after whew, soggy evening. Take a look at this on the radar. A lot of areas seeing the rain. Champaign, Vermillion County over into uh, portions of Douglas, Coles County. Look how things really fill in even more as we go throughout the course of tonight. And then on the back side, colder air tomorrow morning, ah, maybe a flurry or two, but most of us probably won't see much of anything and probably as you're sleeping, so you really won't see it. Temperatures, here's the interesting part. Believe it or not, right now is the warmest part of the day. It's It's been the entire day. Uh, we're in the 50s as temperatures continue to come up just a little bit but they're going to come crashing down. So notice how they're going to hover in these 50s through midnight, and then all of a sudden the cold front comes through and woof, down we go. Uh, we're talking 30s in the morning and maybe even some upper 20s out there. Here's the issue we've got. Uh, eventually when the winds shift, and you can see the wind shift by looking, if you can look real close at the arrows here. Notice all of this out of the south. That's why we're still warm. But if you come just back out here into Iowa, okay, where the Illini did not have such great luck tonight. Those winds are turning to the north and west. That's the change that will eventually usher in the colder air. And that's why tomorrow is going to be even worse because you're going to have 30 mile an hour winds when the temperatures are in the 30s for highs. So tomorrow, a blustery day. So your March Madness weather forecast, you're winning, or we should call it your losing forecast, but this is what it is. Uh, cloudy and 38, that's what's winning for tomorrow in the forecast department. Brackets busted yet? I'm sure they are for some of you after that uh, Arizona upset, and a lot of you probably took Illinois as well. Roberts, tomorrow's high 37 assumption, high temperatures in the mid 30s, a chilly day for sure, especially as I mentioned, because of the wind. All right, let's take a look at late Friday night. There's another little weak system that may throw some flurries in our area, but that's not going to amount to anything. I think the whole weekend is just kind of chilly. I think we catch some sunshine by the end of the weekend, but look at that on Saturday. 29 degrees on what's going to be another windy day. We want spring. It's coming. First day of spring on Monday. We top out at around 45 degrees, but it gets better than that. We're heading back up maybe to the 60s in about a week or so. I've got 63 by next Friday, but we're down here, <laughs> definitely hitting the bottom on Saturday, but give it a week and things will turn around. 29, rain windy out there with those gusts to 40 miles an hour. Temperatures in the upper 30s tomorrow. I think a lot of cloud cover, a lot of wind around. Dry weekend again, and then those temperatures coming up a little bit. The possibility of a chance of some rain uh, next Wednesday. We'll watch a system there, but at least the temperatures are starting to come back up a little bit. But tonight, not the best of Not looking good. And uh, I'm glad you're back inside. Hair's a little wet, but it looks great. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're just kind of, we're just doing what we, we got to do here. Yep. Get through it. <laughs> we'll it's get rough. through it. A line I couldn't get through it today, though. Yeah, they could not. Yep. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Well, it's one of the best eats in central Illinois, how it's being recognized as and plus, there's a real life ice age coming to campus where this mammoth of a guest will soon call home.
This is WCIA 3 News, your local news leader. A local restaurant in Danville will be featured on America's Best Restaurant Roadshow. Gilbert Street Cafe switched to carry out an outdoor seating only to avoid closing during the pandemic. Then it quickly grew in popularity across Danville because of the all day breakfast menu and meals made from scratch. Now the customers get to share in the new excitement with the owners. People have been asking us about this for, for at least the past month now, um, when the show was coming and how what was going to happen. And we're a little bit unsure ourselves exactly how it's going to work, but they should be here pretty soon and we'll, we'll find out, I guess. The restaurant was found because of customer recommendations. The episode should air sometime this spring. Artisan Rantoul are finishing a unique project nearly a year in the making. This statue's next steps include making its way to the U of I campus. It's a 3,500 pound and 16 feet tall woolly mammoth. It started as a 3D model, then artists carved foam blocks, added a metal frame, and then covered it in epoxy and paint. The size of this and the fact that it's going someplace local is a little bit different for us. Um, a lot of our work is in other states um, from coast to coast, so having something close to home is really cool. But it'll go on the semi, it'll cruise on down the road, which might be a sight for some people, and then uh, we will put it in place uh, early next week. Now, there aren't any tusks on the animal right now, but the artist will add them to the body once it makes its way to campus. They molded them from real tusks they found in Arizona years ago. And if you're just checking in, we'll have a look at your top stories in central Illinois. That includes new details about a deadly shooting that happened yesterday in Urbana. This is WCIA 3 News, your local news leader. Time to take a look at the top local stories of the day. This, a 16-year-old killed in a shooting in Urbana has been identified as Montrell Emery. 
Urbana police say they're still working on a motive, but know that it was not a random act. No arrests have been made, but they are working on several leads. Rantoul Township High School will soon have a refreshed lobby, loft area, and basement. They're working with a champagne contractor to make the first phase of the multi-million dollar program happen. Some offices will be gutted, replaced with bathrooms. The work is set to begin next summer and continue through the school year. Coming up, we'll let you know what we're working on for our 10 o'clock newscast, plus one final check of weather on your seven-day forecast. That's coming up next with Kevin. One hospital is focusing on bringing more safety measures to faculty and patients. What changes they're implementing? That's coming up at 10. Seven day forecast here has a lot of rain for tonight, a lot of wind for tomorrow, and the temperatures really coming down as we head into your Friday. It's going to be a blustery day. Saturday, not much better. Only 29 for a high temperature, 20 plus degrees below average. Sunday, a little bounce back. Monday, a better bounce back. And Tuesday, Hey, looking great. 50s there. Uh, some rain maybe by the middle of next week. But got some rough weather to get through over the next 72 hours, that's for sure. Definitely rained on Illinois Parade today. Hopefully that trend just keeps going upward. It was a rough one out there, tough. but uh, pick a new team. Yeah. Root for somebody else. Yeah, underdogs. That yeah. was an upset. All right, we'll see you back here at 10. Have a good night.